today we'll be looking at accounting equation. Accounting equation is derived from the duality concept which says every transaction has both a credit and a debit aspect to it. So all of these aspects will fall under one of these five headings known as the elements. So let's look at each element. First of all, we have equity, usually referred to as capital, is any money introduced into the company by the owners of the company or any money withdrawn by the owners of the company, such as drawings. And then liability is any money owed to an external third party, such as bank loans and debentures. Assets, are, assets is anything that is owned by the company. For example, we have machinery, furniture, buildings that are owned by the company. Income is any money earned in the normal business activities. For example, we have sales, which is the most common income, and you also have interest received. Your expense is any cost incurred by the company. The most common expense is purchase, and we also have other expenses like salary and rent paid. So we've already seen the different elements and we know that every transaction has a debit and credit side to it. So now let's look at the rules to when you need to debit an element and when you need to credit a specific element. So let's start with the first element, equity. So the rules for equity is you need to debit equity when it decreases and you need to credit equity when it increases. So for example, take an owner is introducing capital into the company. So the value of equity is increasing because new capital is coming into the company. So we will record it as a cre credit entry. But whereas when a partner or owner is withdrawing money from the company, the value of capital is decreasing. So we need to debit it. Coming next to liabilities, the rules with regards to liabilities is also debit when it decreases and credit when it increases. So take the example of a bank loan. So when a company takes a bank loan, the value of the liabilities is increasing. So we need to credit the transaction. Whereas when you pay back the bank, the value of the liability decreases. So we will need to record it as a debit entry. And then next we have the next element is asset. The rule for asset is debit when it increases and credit when it decreases. So take the example of purchasing furniture for cash. So when you're purchasing furniture, the value of furniture in the company increases. And as the rule says, we'll need to debit it when it increases. So we will debit furniture. And as we're paying cash, the value of cash in the company decreases. So we will need to credit cash to record a decrease in the value of cash. So when it comes to incomes, the rule is again debit when it decreases and credit when it increases. So the most common example here is sales. Whenever we make a sales, the value of income in the company increases. So usually sales is recorded as a credit entry. But when it comes to sales return, the value of the income is decreasing. So we will record it as a debit entry. And finally, we have expenses. So the rule for expenses is again debit when it increases and credit when it decreases. The most common example for expense that we have is purchase. So whenever we're purchasing goods, the value of the expense in the company increases. So we will record debit as a purchase entry because it's increasing. But whereas purchase return, when you return goods, the value of the purchase decreases in the company. So we usually record purchase returns as a credit entry because the value is decreasing. So these are the different rules and if you look closely, the rule for equity, liability and income is the same and the rule for asset and expenses is the same. So these rules are very important because these are the fun fundamental rules that we'll be using for journal entries, ledgers all the way till your trial balance and the financial statements. I will be explaining the accounting equation. The accounting equation is derived from the dual aspect concept. The accounting equation is the asset is equal to the equity plus the liabilities. Therefore, after every transaction, the asset will be equal to the liabilities. Here, the liabilities can be of two forms. The internal liabilities, which is often called as the owner's fund, and the external liabilities. When there is an increase in the assets, the asset column will be added. While 
when there is an in decrease in the assets, the asset column will be deducted. The same applies to the equity column and the liabilities column. However, when expenses arrive, the equity column will be deducted and when incomes are earned, then the equity column will be added. Now we will look into some of the transactions. The first transaction is Ram commenced business with cash of rupees 1 lakh. Here we have two aspects, the cash account and the capital account. The cash account is increasing by 1 lakh, therefore the asset column will be added by 1 lakh rupees. The capital will be increased by 1 lakh, therefore in the equity column we have 1 lakh rupees. We get the new accounting equation as the asset of 1 lakh is equal to equity of 1 lakh plus 0 liabilities. The second transaction stay says purchased goods worth rupees 10,000 from Kumar. The two aspects in this transaction is the goods being purchased and the Kumar account which is the creditor's account. The, since the goods are being purchased for 10,000 rupees, the stock level in the assets column will be increased by 10,000 and the creditors are going to be increased by 10,000 in the liabilities column. Therefore, we get the new accounting equation as assets of 1 lakh 10,000 is equal to the equity of 1 lakh plus the liabilities of 10,000. Moving on to the third transaction, sold goods for cash of rupees 7,000, the cost of which is rupees 5,000. Since the goods are being sold for 7,000 rupees, the cash balance is going to increase by 7,000. Hence, we add 7,000 to the assets column. However, the value of goods being sold is rupees 5,000. Therefore, the stock level will be reduced by 5,000 in the assets column. The cost minus the selling price, which is the profit here is rupees 2,000, which is 7,000 minus 5,000. And this profit will be added to the equity column. Now we have a new e accounting equation, which is 1,12,000 of assets is equal to 1,2,000 of equity plus 10,000 of liabilities. The fourth transaction is paid to Kumar rupees 4,000. Here we have two aspects. One, the cash balance is reducing by 4,000. Therefore, we deduct the cash amount from the asset column. Two, our creditors, that is Kumar's account, is going to be reduced by 4,000. Therefore, in the liabilities column, we reduce 4,000. And hence, we have a new accounting equation as assets of 1,8,000 is equal to equity of 1,2,000 plus liabilities of 6,000 rupees. Moving on. Salary paid rupees 2000 and salary outstanding rupees 1000. This is a compound transaction. Therefore, we will split the transaction into two parts. The first part being salary paid rupees 2000. Here, the cash balance is going to reduce by 2000. Therefore, in the assets column, we reduce 2000. The second part is salary outstanding of rupees 1000. The outstanding salary is treated as a liability and therefore an increase in liability will cause an addition in the liabilities column. Therefore, we add 1000 rupees in the liabilities column. Okay. According to the accrual concept, all expenses which are due to be paid are to be recognized in the current year. And hence, here the salary amount and the outstanding salary that is 2000 plus 1000, the total of 3000 will be deducted from the equity column. We get a new accounting equation as 1,6000 of assets is equal to 99,000 of equity 
plus 7,000 of liabilities. Moving on, goods returned to Kumar rupees 1,000. Here, the stock level is going to increase by 1,000 as the goods are being returned to the creditor. Therefore, in the asset column, we have minus 1,000, which is the stock level. Since we are returning the goods to Kumar, who is our creditor, 1,000 rupees will be reduced from Kumar's account or the creditor's account in the liabilities column. Hence, we subtract 1,000 from the liabilities column. Now, we get the new accounting equation as 1,5,000 of asset is equal to 99,000 of equity plus 6,000 of liabilities.